In this video, I'm gonna show you my desk setup and explain how I use this for creating the tutorial videos for this channel. I'll also show you the uh, studio, give you a bit of a studio tour so that you can see uh, what other equipment is uh, going on in here. Uh, and also I'll share sort of plans for future development because let's face it, it's never quite finished, is it? There's always something more we can do to improve and add to it. So I do have uh, plans for ongoing improvement as well. Incidentally, the reason for this video is because I did post a uh, photograph uh, of my uh, studio setup on Instagram and a few other places. And I did get quite a few questions about it and specifically uh, one came up in the discord community so if you're not already a member it's free to join head over to takeonetech.io slash family uh, and there we continue the conversation about all the things we talk about in this uh, in this channel so um with that said let's jump over and we'll get on into uh, having a bit of a studio tour so here's the uh, the desk setup and let's start with the uh, with the monitor uh, that is a philips 43 inch monitor um, I've never done a review on it actually, although it is a really great monitor. Um, it's, not a, it's not a TV, I know a lot of people use TVs as monitors, but this is actually a monitor. Unfortunately, it's not available in the US, I don't know quite why. Um, it's only available in, uh, in fact, I don't think it's available in Europe either. It's only sort of seems to be Southeast Asia and Australia, New Zealand, places like that. Um, but I really love it because it's a 4K 43-inch uh, monitor, but it's not widescreen. I've never been a fan of the ultra-wide monitors. So this is effectively just a regular aspect ratio. So uh, think of it as, you know, kind of like four HD monitors in a 2x2 two two arrangement, uh, which works really well for me. And if you've seen all of the hype about the uh, LG Dual Up, uh, monitor which uh, you know people are saying oh well you can have uh, you know like an HD monitor at the top and one at the bottom well this is basically the same but just kind of double the width so it's basically like two LG dual ups together if you want to think of it like that uh, but what's great about that is it means that uh, for from a work perspective if I'm working on something like some coding or a long document or something like that I can have that in a sort of portrait down one side but then if I'm working on spreadsheets so I do a lot of work with data um, then sometimes I have you know a spreadsheet that runs the whole width of it because I need to be able to see all the columns to sort of cross-reference uh, information uh, and it's basically sort of uh, you know, infinitely <laughs> adjustable in terms of uh, things that are suited to more portrait orientation or landscape. So I really love the monitor from that point of view. But for the screen sharing and the sort of screen demos that I do on this channel, um, it's also great for that as well. Because what you can see here is uh, the arrangement that I'll tend to have it in when I'm doing something with a screen demo. And I've basically got different areas of the screen. So basically six different areas, three along the top and three along the bottom, where I can put different applications or things that I want to share. Um, now, when I'm doing a screen demo in, uh, on my channel, in Ecamm Live, I've basically set up scenes that uh, just crop in to those six different areas of the screen. So if I just quickly come over to, uh, I suppose down here actually, I can show you. This is a classic sort of screen sharing view that you would see on my channel. Uh, so I've got my camera up in the top corner there, uh, and then the area of the screen is here. Well, that particular point is just actually sharing this window over here, or, or rather this area of the screen. So I've just cropped in, done a screen share of the whole screen, screen share overlay in Ecamm Live, uh, and then I've cropped into that particular area of the scene. What that means is when I'm doing demos where I'm showing lots of different uh, things throughout the demo, um, then I can have all of those things queued up and ready to go and then just easily switch between them uh, without having to worry about you know swapping, uh, swapping windows actually on the screen. So it gives me lots of different uh, places where I can, uh, I can share different applications. I do tend to only use four of them actually during the, uh, the video or the live stream. So in this case, now that I've moved my camera over to this side, because uh, my camera always used to be actually mounted onto the top. So I've got this ball head there that I mounted. I'll, sh I'll show you how I've got the monitor mounted in a, in a little moment. But um, I always used to have the camera and teleprompter on top of the, uh, the, uh, the monitor, but it was always just sort of looking down at me. So I've recently moved it off to the side to be more at, uh, more at eye level. So because I tend to be sitting more like here, uh, then the areas of the screen I want to be sharing, I have uh, the sort of primary ones are sort of here, uh, and then anything additional would be in these two areas here. Uh, and then anything that's over this side is really too far to look across to. <laughs> it looks a bit unnatural if I'm looking right across to the other side of the screen on the screen whilst I'm recording. So this is more where I keep things like uh, Discord. So on my live stream, we have the Discord going and the Discord back channel as well. Uh, that is gonna be over here. Although actually the, the backstage pass members get access to the live stream, you know, live feed of the live stream whilst it's going on. Uh, and in fact, the actual voice channel, the video part of Discord, uh, I would have down here in case I need to sort of share that or bring anyone from the back channel onto the stream as well. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, down here is where I've got all of my Ecamm controls. 
Um, and this is also where I have my Ecamm main window. So although I do use a teleprompter to show me the output of Ecamm, so you can see that whatever I'm seeing here, uh, I'm also seeing up here in the, uh, uh, this, uh, this teleprompter. Um, I don't use teleprompters for, <laughs> for actual uh, teleprompting as such. It's just literally to see the output to make sure I'm showing the, uh, the correct things that are going out uh, and can and monitor the output. Um, but I use the, uh, the video monitor function on Ecamm to send the, the output to here. Uh, and then the Ecamm main window is down here. Some people I know put the Ecamm main window actually on that second monitor. I just find that then it makes it a bit tricky to make uh, changes because that's not the largest of monitors. So I prefer to have the actual Ecamm main window separate. Uh, and so this is where I can do all of the, uh, the controls and things like that. Uh, so then the uh, camera and teleprompter is off to the side, as you can see. Uh, now, one thing I found though, when I moved the, uh, the teleprompter, sorry, the, the camera and this screen off to the side, during a live stream, I did always like to have the chat directly below the camera so that I can just glance down to have a look at the chat. So what I've done uh, at the moment is I've just moved my uh, iPad mini that's on sidecar from the, coming from the Mac mini. Uh, so it's just acting as another display. So here I can have the chat. Uh, sometimes I do have bullet points for the uh, live stream because otherwise I get distracted. I've got a bit of a squirrel mind like that. <laughs> so um, I'll have some bullet points maybe for things to cover in the live stream. Um, also when I'm on Zoom calls, then this is where I'd have the gallery view. That's where I'd have the speaker view um, or any notes or anything that I need for the call would be down there as well. This is just a temporary solution. What I will be doing is getting a uh, like a 15 inch small portable monitor um, and then I'll have that in uh, portrait orientation here. So it'll basically be something similar to that there for the top half I'll use for chat notes, things like that. I'll probably also though move my Ecamm controls over to the bottom of that monitor as well because whilst I don't normally make changes kind of on the fly, uh, if you are doing a live stream and then suddenly there's some overlay missing or something not right with the scenes, it is always good to be able to just easily uh, see them at a glance. I'll probably have that uh, down there when I do upgrade that monitor. Uh, believe it or not, even with all that space, for some of the screen demos that I do, I do still run out of space a little bit. Um, now, when the camera was on the top of the screen, uh, I'd still got six areas to work with, but I do find that this one over here is just a little bit too far away uh, to use in practical pur purposes for demos. So what I'm also going to do is add a second small monitor off to this side. So I'll have one down here that will be for chat notes and things like that, uh, and then there'll be another monitor over here that will just be purely for uh, screen demos. Again, probably just a 15, 17 inch, something like that. That, uh, just purely for screen demos and I'm not really bothered about the resolution of it either I don't think I'll go with a 4k monitor just a small HD will be fine for what I'm trying to do because ultimately it's all just sort, sort of squeezed down anyway into this kind of view so uh, I'll probably just as I say just get something uh, smaller for there so the microphone now is uh, mounted here, so the short MV7, still going into the Rodecaster Pro 2, uh, but I have now switched my microphone arm to the Ava Media live streamer uh, boom arm, which is amazing. <laughs> First of all, it's got such a long reach, so it means that uh, whilst the Elgato Wave uh, LP would have come to about here, this gives you an extra sort of nine inches, and it means that I can have the microphone mounted to the far side of my desk over there, um, but when I'm not recording or live streaming, it can just sort of fold out of the way. Uh, and the thing that's great about this arm is it's not just a low profile arm, so you can see that it's sort of low profile, but because uh, you can basically orientate it in every direction, uh, it could be a top down arm, it could be a low profile arm, it could be a bit of a hybrid of both. So it's just got full flexibility on all joints, so it can, all joints can move in all directions. So it means I can just sort of move it out of the way there, but uh, I've also used it as a top down camera uh, arm at times as well. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend that. It's really great. And if you need a little bit of extra reach, then you can get with the Elgato Wave. Uh, this is uh, really, uh, really solid. And the build quality, I would say, is on par with the Elgato Wave as well. So I've been really happy with that. I have repurposed my Elgato Wave arm though. Uh, and that is now, uh, if I just disconnect this, uh, that is now basically holding my Rodecaster Pro 2. So uh, I've just used the single uh, lug in the bottom, single bolt in the bottom. Uh, and now the Rodecaster Pro 2 is mounted to that, which means that when I'm doing demos, I can just sort of pull it towards me uh, and uh, you know use it if I've got the top-down shot showing off the Rodecaster, or I can just push it out of the way when I'm not. I think it was just such a <laughs> such a smart move of uh, Rode to add that extra bolt in the bottom. And they've also got the visa mount in the bottom as well. So if you've got some sort of arm with a visa mount, then that's going to be a um, 
uh, you know, possibly, arguably, a more stable support because it's obviously four points of, uh, of contact there as opposed to a single single bolt. But certainly, the Elgato Wave seems to be holding up. And I have managed to also, if I just pull it out a little bit, I have managed to use the cable routing to a point as well. So I've got all the main cables going in there. The microphone cable, uh, I haven't actually at the moment, but probably not quite enough room for that. Uh, but it does mean that I can route the cables in there and it sort of keeps it a little bit cleaner from underneath. You don't end up with a load of uh, cables hanging down there. Um, the, uh, the monitor itself uh, is actually mounted to a sort of one of those TV stands. So you can see it goes down to the floor. You've got some uh, wheels on it at the bottom there. Uh, and that is basically completely separate from the desk then. I was super paranoid <laughs> about knocking it over because although it had got some uh, legs on it, you know, that sort of sticking out, I did sort of think that this was going to go over at some point if I, uh, if I just stood it on the desk. Um, I could have obviously got a monitor arm, but Again, quite a large uh, thing to hold up, although you can get arms that will hold it. Um, but it's also the point that it was everything was connected to that. So you could, as I mentioned, my ball head for the camera was up there. This is now the Ava Media 4K. Um, I'll leave a link to everything I'm talking about in the description, obviously. But um, this I use for a second sort of angle. I'm still testing that out a little bit, but it's, uh, I've been really impressed with the, the quality I've got out of it as a sort of secondary 4K angle, even though all of my videos are, <laughs> tend to be HD anyway. But... Um, it's been uh, it's been pretty good, but as you can see, it's actually mounted onto the uh, the TV stand as well. So those are the kind of the two poles coming up from the TV stand, uh, and then this is just mounted to the top of them. I've also used one of these uh, boom arms here, these uh, sort of cheap uh, mic arms to uh, use to mount an iPhone, and then I'm using Camo by Reincubate uh, to use the camera from the phone as a top-down camera. I'll probably replace that at some point with an actual camera, uh, but uh, it's, been, it's been working all right for me so far. Um, so I digress. The point was, all of this is mounted off the, uh, the monitor uh, or the monitor stand. So what that means is it's isolated from, uh, from the desk. So as I'm you know, banging the desk, if I do occasionally, then it doesn't transmit through to the, uh, the top-down camera or the camera on the top. So I really like the fact that it's, uh, the, the monitor is completely separate. The, uh, the camera though, and the teleprompter, now that I've moved them off the top of the monitor, I have now got that, uh, that tripod behind there that is, uh, is not the most uh, <laughs> attractive of things. So what I was thinking of doing was actually uh, getting a second desk that is sort of taller than this desk and slightly wider, and putting that behind, because I've got quite a gap there just to sort of house all of this stuff. So I could almost have a second, uh, second desk running behind there, maybe like, you know, a foot and a half wide, something like that, that basically everything else mounts off. So then I would get an actual arm to mount the, uh, the main display. I'd also get an arm to mount that one. And then as I've said, you know, getting these other two displays for the screen sharing and the notes and things like that down here, um, then they would all mount off that desk as well. And what that would mean is that I would still have that sort of isolation of my desk from all of those different things. I could mount the Elgato Wave arm with the Rodecaster onto there as well. Uh, only thing I couldn't do, which is probably the most important, is this particular one, although maybe I could figure out a different way to have that coming in from uh, somewhere else as well. Um, other things, just briefly, that are on the, uh, the desk, in case you're interested, the uh, Stream Deck, of course, and the uh, Loop Deck. Often get people asking about how those are mounted. This is just a little Ulanzi uh, tablet stand, and the Stream Deck sits on top of that, and the stand actually only holds the loop deck so uh, this one you can just literally lift it off but uh, whilst it's there it's pretty stable stays where it is and that's what I use for Ecamm so I have uh, all my controls for Ecamm here uh, and here as well <laughs> so I only really use the loop deck for Ecamm whereas Stream Deck I use for absolutely everything uh, but having the dials on the loop deck is useful for um, for using with uh, with Ecamm to control levels and things like that. Uh, I've also got the Ava Media Livestream and Nexus here, which I've been uh, testing out. So I'm still in the uh, testing process to see how that's going to sort of fit into uh, to everything. Although with the Stream Deck and Loop Deck and with the Rodecaster, um, it's not ad actually adding a huge amount of functionality to what I'm doing right now, uh, but it is a really interesting device in itself. Uh, I've got the Stream Deck pedal down below as well, so I do use the Stream Deck pedal and also my uh, third-party uh, uh, pedal that I, uh, I, I use as well before the Stream Deck pedal came out. Also on the desk is uh, my <laughs> black whiteboard, so I use this for uh, writing things down, maybe little notes, 
So it's just a whiteboard with uh, a, oh, a black whiteboard, whatever you call it, <laughs> a blackboard, uh, but it's made uh, glass. Um, so it's just useful for, um, well, for all sorts of times, actually, for before Zoom meetings or something like that, if I want to write something down on it. Often if I've got a meeting and I'd uh, worry that I might forget the person's name, I'll write their name down on it. Um, or during live streams to just jot things down, you know, if I need to remember some particular facts or figures or something like that, then I'll often just write them on that and then wipe them off afterwards. Uh, so that's pretty, uh, pretty handy. Um, also on here, we've got to obviously the Logitech MX Master 3, the uh, best mouse in the world. <laughs> And uh, I suppose just quickly, since we are talking about studio, uh, the behind there is an acoustic panel. Um, I've got an, another acoustic panel from hanging from the roof there. Uh, two sort of totally generic uh, lights there that just, they, they actually just use regular light bulbs. So I can change the uh, temperature and brightness if I change the bulb, <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, uh, another acoustic panel there, that's actually covering the, uh, a window. So that one I've put on a slider so that I can slide it to actually get access to the window, although I've put a sort of shelf unit there too, uh, which cunningly blocks that out. A uh, couple more acoustic panels on the back, a few more, and around this side as well. Uh, I do have a green screen, which is a sort of homemade job uh, that just sort of rolls down. So I've got this steel tube that's running across the top and then I can just lower that down. Uh, and then down there we've got the uh, Nanolite Pavo Tube 6Cs that I give in this sort of wash on the back wall. And then that sort of backlighting effect that we've got is just from these LED strips. I'll replace these with something better at some point. I mean, there were these really sort of um, uh, cheap <laughs> lighting strips that you see on Amazon and the like. And then they just have a, a little remote like this so we can uh, change the color of them. Um, but if there is a power cut, they do default to the uh, just <laughs> multicolored flashing lights. So uh, something like this, if I can, there you go. So if, if ever there is a slight drop in power, um, then they just default to like that, which is not entirely ideal. Um, but anyway, I will change those to something that give me a little bit more control at some point. Uh, and then the, uh, the acoustic panels carry on around this side. Uh, I've got a little shelving unit there. And obviously you need to have a place to have a nap. It's quite tiring being a content creator sometimes. In case you're interested, I did do a full video all about the studio build and you can find that video right over here.